Jin. Yeah. And today we're talking about a very interesting story that I'm sure some of you have seen on social media. And for those of you who are familiar with a page on social media on Facebook and Instagram called Humans of New York, you probably have seen about a scene and read about a Ghanaian photographer, Paul Ninsen, who, after his inspiring story was shared with the uh, humans of New York, has been interviewed across all various media platforms. And, well, someone may be wondering, well, it's about photography, the story. If you don't know about it, so this gentleman has the intention of building a photo library for Africa. Now, that's very interesting. And I, I, find, I find that very interesting because I love photography and I love the fact that Africa, the African story is going to be told with photos. And I like the fact that it's a Ghanaian doing this. And as a result, we're going to have this conversation and we will talk about the tech aspect of everything that has to go, has to do with this. So today on the show, I will be talking to Mr. Paul Ninsen, who is the who is in charge of this project. So he's he's been trying to raise about a million dollars for this project. And so far, as of the time when I was reading about it, he had raised about six hundred thousand dollars for this. And we're almost there. So, yeah, you're going to learn about his story. Hi, Mr. Paul Ninsen. Hello, sir. Um, thank you so much for having me here. It's a, it's um, a pleasure. I've had the opportunity to listen to um, your segment for some time now. That's, that's honorable. Thank you very much. Now, I mean... Yeah, I, I can't hide my excitement because I love photography, like I said in the introduction. And I've been playing around with a camera. I've been playing around with my smartphone, trying to take pictures all the time. And yeah, photographers inspire me from the likes of Imano Obie and Nanako Fiakwa. I've been following all of them. And to know that something like this is going to happen, I'm very excited. I'm going to ask you a little bit of a backstory. I'm sure a lot of people know, but some don't know. So tell me what, first off, tell me about yourself. Uh, tough one. Um, I'm Paul Ninsen. Uh, I come from um, Kumbawu um, in the Asante region. Um, I grew up in Kumase. Um, so I went to Ken UST, I went to Kumase Academy, and from there I've been, I was freelancing a lot, you know, working on um, printing t shirts, citation certificate. I think that's what most people knew me in the beginning when I was in Ken UST for and later on it transited to become a photographer four years ago and from there um, i was able to gain admission to school in us and now i'm coming back so that's the summary of my life story that's the summary of your life now if you're listening to the show it's geek squad brought to you by mtn choose your own bundle your own way with mtn flexi bundle just dial star 138 hash and enjoy bundles that don't expire we're taking a quick commercial break when we come we're diving in deeper to understand what's going on with the photo library in Africa. Hello class, mental. What is two and three? 23. Two and four? 24. Two and five? Sonata. It's been 25 amazing years with you. And to celebrate this huge milestone, we're giving away 25 brand new sleek Hyundai Sonata vehicles and lots of exciting prizes in the MTN at 25 promo. Just keep using your MTN number and talk, text, browse, and Momo more to gain points. And you could win one of 25 brand new sleek Hyundai Sonata vehicles and lots and lots of cash prizes each month in the MTN at 25 promo. Dial star 156 hash today and begin your journey to win big only on MTN everywhere you go and we're back the show is Geek Squad on Joy 99.7 and we're talking about Africa's photo library and why Ghana needs for Africa needs a photo library and I'm talking to Mr. Paul Ninsen, who is chasing this project to make it a reality. So I asked you a bit about yourself, and now I'm going to ask, why photography? How did you get into photography? 
Um, thank you. So I got into photography um, one honestly because of one um, um, economical reasons and also for to become a father. You know, um, I wanted to spend more time with my daughter. I wanted to, um, you know, I've always envisioned. I've, um, my dad has always been with me. Um, we spend most time together. So for me, it was apparent for me to spend more time with my daughter. And I felt that photography one was a way to make enough money and to to be able to spend quality time with my daughter. And again, um, I've always wanted to be part of something bigger than myself. Um, and so photography was a means to express myself and a means to be contribute to the society ways that um, if uh, that means would not help me. So that was my main reason of joining them, um, picking up photography. Right. So what does it take for someone to become a photographer? Let's say, I mean, I, I can't just wake up and pick up. I've seen people take photos with their smartphones and it's all random. And some of these people call them. So they say, oh, I'm a very good photographer. You give me your phone, I'll take a photo of you. And then it's just terrible. So what does it take? Is there a special eye to become, you know, that you need to become a photographer? Uh, <laughs> that's interesting because again, um, I think our understanding of photography and it takes, it took, it took me some time for me to understand that um, photography is not um, the way I thought it was. It's just something simple. It's just like the, the camera is just like the pencil where people use the pencil to draw. So the camera is the same thing, you know, draw the most people say is drawing with light, you know, so whether be it with your smartphone, be it with um, a professional camera or semi-professional camera, I think that the, the process of um, freezing a moment is what it's all about. Whether the picture is nice or the picture is not nice is uh, subjected to individual um, preference, you know, um, I think even my mother takes pictures and I think that to her is nice, you know, to some, it might not be nice. Yeah. The process is also a form of self-expression, you right. know, so photography has a, is means is subjected to interpretation by a lot of people. So in Ghana, do you identify as a photographer as well when you're in Ghana? Yes, 100%. I, I identified myself as a photographer. You know, it was in the beginning, You sometimes I think in the beginning it was not too sure because of what society has interpreted uh, photography to be. So even when I had Canon T3i, which is like a budget camera, I wasn't too sure of it, you know, um, that am I a photographer? You know, because sometimes the most common people say is that, oh, nowadays everybody's a photographer, but everybody has an, an iPhone. I'm sure um, very soon, I think on um, 13 September, I've, um, Apple is releasing a new iPhone yeah. and they are increasing the camera. Mm -hmm. You know, it's taking better pictures than my first camera. So then it's like, now who is a photographer? Everyone is a photographer in his own right. right. So when you were in Ghana, did you ever ex experience the whole, oh, you're a photo? <laughs> and how did that, <laughs> yes, <laughs> and did that yes. have an effect on you? Because I know a lot of people don't like to be addressed as a photo because they feel it's derogatory. Yes, uh, honestly, yes. Um, I think even my mother, the first time I told her about becoming a photographer, her perspective and is that the guy with the camera around his neck and going from funeral to funeral <laughs> and taking pictures to make a living. But I'm very grateful she supported me. Mm. Um, even when she knew her perspective of um, photography was limited to that, she supported me. And I think that a lot of people did not understand my path and why I wanted to be. And I think there's many people out there in Ghana um, who wanted to express themselves. They feel that photography is a way to express themselves. They feel photography is a way to make money but then again because of the perception and um the economic reason people do not want to be addressed mm -hmm. in us i would say in new york you know people even people who come to tour times square and other places walk around proudly with their cameras around their neck and you know as much as they may not be making money they are still part of it and i think it's a stage as level the maturity of photography or the level of the industry is um, growing, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago, 
uh, would never had somebody like Nana Kofi Akwara Bob Pixel, mm -hmm. uh, may his role so rest in peace, um, and other people, you know, Francis, Nick, um, Nicholas, all these people, you know, wonderful Yao Pari and others. We didn't have them 20 years, 10 years ago, you know, so it's stages in life, you know, and that is the contribution of all of us wanting to contribute to the next stage in life. Were there, were there specific challenges you faced as a photographer while you were in Ghana that you don't face in New York? I mean, I'll be honest with you, um, um, everywhere with its own problem, nowhere cool. I mostly, <laughs> um, uh, when I came to New York, I've been doing a project, a personal project called Nowhere Cool. Mm. Um, everywhere with its own problems, you know. Um, uh, yes, I faced problems in Ghana. Yeah. The problems were allegedly made because of the situations there. And that is the reason why I'm doing this project to solve those problems, right. you know. Um, the selected few sh should not be only people to tell their stories. It shouldn't be a clique and a group. It shouldn't be just for a few people who have the money to buy the camera. I think it should be for somebody like me from Kuma who grew up in a Bwakwa with mm -hmm. no electricity. I think it should be part of an educational system of a, a larger broad conversation. And I think, again, people misunderstand what photography is in, in many ways. You know, archiving is photography. You know, um, um, a lot of things, you know, creating exhibition, all these things are part of photography. And, and that is what I envision uh, every time my mother tells me that um, when you go to somebody's house and the person's advising his kids or when the person is doing something, listen to it, mm -hmm. learn from it so that you can count, uh, bring it home and make it your own. So when I came to New York, I've been to a lot of shows. I've been to a lot of conversation, you know, um, group you know, Saturday, just hanging out in Brooklyn with uh, people talking about their experience in photography. I've seen top photographers. I've seen people who are starting yesterday and other things. So um, I think that is what I'm bringing back. And that is what I'm willing to work with other people to. Um, it doesn't take much to hang out in Osu mm -hmm. or hang out in Labadi with a bunch of photographers, just learning from each other. It shouldn't be something which is difficult. True, true, true. Now, you know, for for our part of the world, it's um, it's it's not the same appreciation that people have for photography like you have in New York. Is there mm -hmm. something that you know our various stakeholders need to understand so they can appreciate the importance of photography? Um, yes. Again, as I'm saying, is the level of understanding of what photography means mm -hmm. and what it, it can do. You know, um, I think that I am exposed by my privilege of being here right. to a lot of things, you know, and I, I'm, I'm grateful. You know, I always say that being privileged is not a crime, but how you use your privilege is what is most important. Um, I've had the privilege to know Brandon. I've had the privilege to work on documentaries here in New York. I've mm -hmm. had the privilege to be on advertising sets and it's different. It's different from what I used to do in Ghana. I used to assist in Ghana. You know, I assisted in some commercial projects in Ghana. And I think that in, look, in development, you know, in activism, in um, a lot of things, social activities and other things, you know, a lot of people are now in Ghana being proactive and talking about things and speaking against certain things in Ghana, Galamse being Galamse being um, af deforestation and other things, you know, and how do somebody in Lake Lebi or somebody in Abuakwa, somebody in um, Northern Region Tamale or other places use photography, filmmaking and other things to be able to tell stories which were never um, told in a way, you know, if you give a camera to an activist, what can the person use the camera to amplify his voice, his, expresses his opinion? You know, some people are um, um, feminists, some people are um, um, socialists, some people are just give them a camera or give them the tools to amplify what they want to say or what they want to do. And again, you know, amplify Ghana. Mm -hmm. It's sad that sometimes people do not know what my country is. And I've loved Ghana in a way I've never loved before um, because it's my home. Mm -hmm. um, I always say that mini baby are called Ghana yeme mai, yena mai. And I think that um, if I'm able to help or together with other people in Ghana, help um, project Ghana the way it's not, or help project Ghana the way it should be, 
rather than allowing people to tell our story in the single narratives, um, I think um, it will bring more development to Ghana, it will bring more uh, attention to Ghana, uh, especially with my African Americans. When I tell them I'm from Ghana, the, the reaction to it is so beautiful. You know, it's like, oh, Ghana, my mother, motherland, you know, people have this uh, sentiment and love for Ghana and Africa, which they don't even know. Sometimes I have pictures of Ghana. Uh, from Ghana on my phone and I showed them this is the Ghana you don't know you know so people want to visit Ghana people want to come people feel that this is home and I think that the visuals the stories coming out of Ghana will be something which will help the country which will help Ghana in a way which has never been great 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 that's wonderful I like the fact that people you know react when they hear Ghana sometimes you hear stories out there and then you're wondering so People think Ghana is a whole, I mean, they think Africa is a whole country. So the fact that people actually recognize that Ghana is a country in Africa is also good news. Now, let's get to your project, mm -hmm. the photo library. Why a photo library? Um, it's a, it's a, so it's a center, it's a learning center, you know, it's more than a library, mm -hmm. you know. Um, um, I'm just solving a problem. I'm just using my life situation, how hard it was to get a workshop, how hard it was to get a community of photographers like me mm -hmm. to be in the same room to talk about something which is important to us. That's all I'm doing. Right. I, and then also bringing things which I've seen here to Ghana. You know, the skyscrapers in, uh, in New York, you know, they started building them about 100 years ago. Um, I want my skyscraper to be in Ghana. You know, I want the things which are not there to be there. I want my friends, you know, um, my, my, my kids, my the next generation to have things which is not in Ghana. That's what I'm doing. I'm not, this is not complex. It's just something I've seen here, which is not in Ghana and just doing it. And also building bridges between Ghana and US in uh, Europe and other places where um, the conversation of what Ghana is, is different. So, for me, that is what I'm trying to do. I'm not, isn't, so backstory, I started collecting African photo books. Right. Out of frustration, out of, you know, like I want my friends to see in 1982, 1940, what Ghana was. You know, stories yeah. which people are telling about Ghana. How do we learn from them? You know, so that's all I started with. And it became more, um, I got 2,000 books, 3,000 books, 4,000 books, 5,000 books. My whole apartment was filled with books. Um, at a point, my, I think my apartment was smelling all books. And <laughs> got first storage, second storage, third storage. Then now I have eight storage units across the um, New York, which um, try to gather as much as book. Maybe people might think that maybe I'm being hoarding books. Yeah, I'm hoarding. not. If, yeah. if I'm hoarding the books for myself to build a personal library in Ghana is a different thing but I'm bringing the books back at home. And I know um, some of my friends um, who have been in touch for a num number of um, um, years now knows what we need. And I'm not doing something which people do not need. I've listened to a lot of my friends, mm -hmm. the frustration and everything. And I've dedicated my life and my service to bring this to Ghana. I've lost a lot of money in the process. Um, I mean, uh, but this is a sacrificial thing. And I think that um, the gift to help someone is more important than anything in the world to me. Wow. So in collecting these books, I'm, I'm, cur I'm curious, where were you getting them? And was that the inspiration for starting the photo library, the books? Uh, yes, it started with the books. Um, I, so in New York, there's a lot of secondhand books um, in New York, in Brooklyn, in Manhattan, in other places, you know, and online as well. One of the difficult things in Ghana when I was back in Ghana was the delivery of Amazon, delivery of other com um, books back in Ghana. You know, now I see Nana Rare, Damwa doing amazing work. I see other people having books. Um, um, I see um, Sylvia in West Ligon doing amazing work over there. And that is what I wanted to continue on, but this time with photo books. Mm -hmm. And I started buying them in small quantities. The real books are very expensive. Very. The books which are known in publication are very, very, very expensive, to be honest with you. And I think that 
that is where I started. Then fr I made friends in the industry. Mm. And now everybody knew me to be the guy who is collecting books to go to Ghana. So they were in support of it. They gave me books. Then I started reaching out. When I, I think I, when I got to 6,000 books, I realized that there's more than the whole live um, books collection industry has been open to me. I've made good friends and they supported me. And I started doing blasting, going to places, go to galleries. I just walked to a gallery and say, hey, I'm Paul Ninson. I just graduated from this school. Um, in, it's that, back then I was in school and I want to go back home with these books. And people willingly gave it out, like, wow. have it. What you're doing is honorable and we support you. We don't have the money, but we have the books to give to you. Some had two copies. They gave me one. Some, it was just that. And it became more and more and more. And now um, I have more than 30,000 books. Wow. So in a, in a case that you start the library and you have these books in the library, are people allowed to take these books out or they come there, consume the content and then leave them? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking this because you mentioned some of these books are expensive. Now, you know, you know Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, oh, maybe the bus is here. Next thing you know, the book is gone. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, um, I know, I know, I know. I've been discouraged a lot from people <laughs> saying what I'm doing is stupid. You know, I should concentrate on my life. Um, I should concentrate on making money from experiencing the American dream, make money and bring it back home, build the mansion. And yes, the, everybody want to live comfortable life. Um, yeah, it's, it's a reference library. I'll be honest with you. Right. I cannot give books out, you know. It's a, that's why I'm building a center. You okay. can stay there all day, all night, um, use the books and just put it back, you know. So I think that uh, I, I cannot, in good conscience, give the books and then lose them. I have a book, which is, I bought it, the book is, was published in 1940. It was signed by the then governor. And such a book, I bought it very, is expensive. It's really expensive. I'm talking about um, $300 and I cannot in good conscience let somebody take it away that it will get lost and another person might not use it. Yeah. Okay, but then that's where technology can help you. So are you considering exactly. digitizing some of these books? Yes. Yes. Um, also, I want to say that I cannot bring everything. I'm not. I'm just a single, simple guy who lives in Brooklyn and collecting books. I cannot bring everything to Ghana. I cannot get every single books. If I could get every single books in book in in US or U Europe or UK to bring it to Ghana, I'll be the happiest guy on earth. But I cannot. So I have to innovate. I have to find ways and means where. I can still bring the experience. I can still bring the knowledge to Ghana by, so I have a program I'm working on is, um, I, I'm, I'm seeking iPads. I'm right. seeking computers. What I'm doing is that I'm working with organizations here who have massive, um, um, archive system of books. Um, I'm speaking to New York public library, um, to be able to bring the New York public library to Ghana but in a digital form hmm. um, to be able to have research. You know, University of Ghana, uh, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology can come in and have, um, students can come in and um, researching in PhDs, research and other things can be able to log on to computers and iPads in my library, the library, sorry, not mine, the hmm. library and be able to see, have access to all these things. You know, the world is moving for us forward and fast. And I think that technology will help um, this organization immensely. Great. So when is it started? When is the development started? I'm still raising money. <laughs> <laughs> um, so far, uh, how much are we at now? I think, I, I think 1.2. I think so. I have not checked. 1.2 million. 2. Yes. Wow. Um, yes, I think 1.2. Yeah, 1.2. I just, I'm just being told um, is 1.2. Wow, 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 um, wow. My friend Brandon Stanton can only do much. Mm. You know, this is a, um, a very good friend of mine who helped me get to New York, um, get me paid my uh, the rest of my tuition. I had a scholarship and he paid the rest. Right. And he can only do much. He has a platform to get things done quickly, and he's raised one point two million for me. 
the burden is going to cost more than that and i'm still raising money so um i'm in new york right now and i'm still talking to people speaking to everybody who i can and i'm still trying to talk to people in ghana and anyone who is willing to help is a non-profit mm. it's not for me and my family you know so anybody who is willing to help anybody who is willing to contribute a uh, block um a, 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 a simple wood to fix the roof yeah. anybody who's willing to um contribute to a bag of cement, a cement a yeah. bag of cement um whatever it is let's build it together one yeah. of the things i think i say a lot is it's not for me and if it was for me it would be, have been different so i'm raising money but what we are trying to do is that whilst we're waiting to build the building we're going to start we're going to find a place we're looking currently my team in ghana we are looking for a place to rent right um we don't have a specific location it's expensive i never knew i think i've lost touch with accra how expensive it's been for the past two years and we're still talking to pe um, people and we're still looking for a place to start so we we'll look for a place have a mimic of what is coming what the whole building will be in a smaller scale and then we can still continue to raise the money and build the bigger building and then we can move in so right. my prayer I pray to God that the Lord will strengthen me and um, shine more grace onto this because he knows my heart. He knows um, how much I love Ghana and Africa, and he knows how much people will enjoy this. And again, it's not limited to one location. I know people are talking about the location. It's not limited to one location. We do, I mean, we're using technology mm -hmm. to expand it across Ghana and work with governments, work with um, private entities, work with non-profit to expand, expand it to every part of Ghana in africa so you're raising the money through crowdfunding um yes so we raised 1.2 from crowdfunding right now mm. but also we're talking out to people okay regular people who have the money you know you are privileged to have the money and if you see a vision in this um i think that is something you could do to help mm. you know um yeah we, every, we i'm talking to everyone i'm open i'm a simple open person and I'm talking to everyone who is willing. So if you are out there um, willing to donate and help us in any way, um, I'm open to it. Great, great, great. Now, are you in Ghana? Are you working with all the photographers in Ghana to make this happen? Um, yes, I'm talking to some of my... the. So again, when I was in Ghana, I was not really known. Mm -hmm. I didn't have much photography friends. <laughs> That's the truth. Uh, so the ones I know, I'm talking to them. Um, recently i have not in the past one week i have not because the goal is to raise the money the goal is to get the books to ghana and i've been very busy you know with so when the time comes i will sit down with some of the photographers or anybody at all it shouldn't be limited to photographers mm -hmm. filmmakers you know everybody will sit down in the room of people with ideas because um again there's levels of photography i'm i'm willing to open a space where it will teach a kid who is five years old how to take pictures right and use that to whatever class um extension or schools you know um, um international committee schools um um, um, um osu presby school public school how can we i'm figuring it out as i go forward and it's not just limited to my friends who are professional photographers even people who are older 60 years you know people who are bankers if they want to spend a weekend with us to learn how to take pictures and look a mother who want to take pictures of the daughter mm -hmm. you know documents his life of you know how do you teach the person so i'm not limiting it to just photographers who are professional is everyone is every single everyone who is willing to do um learn photography the act and the process of photography um uh, that that's the person i'm looking for so yeah I mean, I, it, it does make sense because everyone has a smartphone now, like we started with a conversation and everyone knows how to whip out the camera and take a shot. Like you said, without it doesn't matter whether it's nice or not nice because it's subjective. So, yeah, I think it would definitely apply to everyone. And you I heard that the project is called Dikai. Yes, the project is called Dikai. OK, so <laughs> which, which means take the lead, take the lead. So you're taking yeah. the lead to do this. Yes, mm -hmm. um, is, uh, the, is, is, is something my dad used to tell me when I was a kid. 
oh, wow. to solve problems. So my dad is um, 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 a very pragmatic person. So he always say, um, take the lead, you know, mm. take the lead. Always it was like, take the lead, you know. So, so do you envision that? that do you envision that this project would encourage the youth to want to take up photography as a digital skill? I believe so. Hmm. Why? Because I've been talking to a lot of my friends and even this, um, uh, be honest with you, um, I've never felt this love from a country, from my people in this way. You know, everybody's expressing opinion, suggestion, advice, Paul, bring it here, bring it there. Hmm. It shows the need, you know, it shows that the reception shows that people love this to happen. You know, even, you know, if somebody does not contribute and the person prays for me, prays for this project to happen, that is great, you know. So, um, yeah, but, um, um, I think that a lot of people are looking forward to it. And yeah. So besides people grabbing photography skills from Dikan, do you envision that they would get other things like would it serve other purposes besides just being a, a resource point or reference point for photography yes um as as the name goes decan i am taking the lead to do this i am not limiting it to me hmm. if there's anybody out there after or at, after mine is running or in the process of running and the person want to do something in um konongo and I have the resource to help the person. Why not? Is the beauty of this thing is you don't don't make it about you, you know. Don't make it selfish about you because it's for the people. It's not for me. Mm -hmm. So if there's somebody out there has a land and want us to help build something small, again, my architects are working on. We've been doing this for the past six months, building prototypes of how do we make this as cheap as possible in Konongo, in Kumase, in I'm not a junction in um, 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 Sunyane to make it in a small quant way cheaper to be able to be accessible to other people. I'm not being selfish. Um, if anybody out there want to come on board for us to scale this in a larger way, I honestly I have friends from Kenya, um, Tanzania who are also interested in it, and I do not pride myself to take this to be my own. Is I just I'm the one solving the problem now. There might be 15 people out there who be inspired by this to solve the problem by themselves or with my help or with anybody's help. And I think honestly there are people there with good hearts and who see a vision and who it might not be photography. It might be something else, you know. And little by little, all of us collectively can solve African problem um, rather than just hoping that somebody will back to the books so i <laughs> i know what kind of um books i mean you mentioned one from as early as 1940s now are these photo books are these books that have like photos in them yes again um i think in u.s the broad context of a photo book goes beyond just a book with a picture right you know even with you in the media there are certain books which are not available for you you know, so for me, it's like, how do I get those books to you? I have a book right now staring at it on my shelves. We talk about journalism and innovation, which talks about um, data and data science and and, um, and journalism. I have a friend who from Ghana who is in Colombia right now. He graduated a week ago who is studying data journalism and such a person is, is welcome to a center like that, mm. you know, and why would I? Be limited to photo books if you be interested to buy all these things and um journalism entrepreneurship um in journalism um innovative way of you know telling stories right. um ai um, um uh, the rest yeah. vr you know all that how do we bring all these um i know friends who are in um data science who are in accounting you know how do we bring all these things to merge with photography if you bring that conversation up is broader than what just taking pictures will be. Right. Now, the reason I'm asking this is that I, in my mind's eye, I also see it as a place, as a museum of historical images that we can fo follow through to see maybe like the transition of time 
let's say for Ghana, for instance, I take Ghana for uh, as an example. When we were studying history, I studied history. And sometimes you're being told some of the stories. And, it, you know, we're, we're, human beings were very impressionable. We're, we're visual people. I wish I could see pictures of some of these stories because then it would make more sense to me and I could relate. And then maybe in the exam hall, when I'm trying to remember the Asokochuna something, that an image would flash in my mind and I would be able to, you know, write some something. But as it stands, most of it are illustrations that you can't really relate to. And the story is just subject to your own imagination, your imagination and your mind's picture of what you're studying. So that's what I'm envisioning with this. And honestly, that's if that was it, I think I'd probably spend half my time of the day there every single time just to go through Ghana's history because I feel that's one thing that's lacking. Is this something that you also see as a possibility of happening? I think, uh, my friend, I think that maybe probably you should join us, <laughs> you know, maybe probably you should, um, I would, uh, we should talk and you join us and bring your insights and your information and other things I've not even thought about. Honestly, yeah, what you're saying, I've thought about it. It's expensive, my brother. It's very expensive, mm. <laughs> you know, because for years and years, the outpour of the, the, the serpent of African stories archives, you know, I just don't want to go into it. It's, it's like, what happened to independence videos? Mm -hmm. Who was recording them? Have you thought about them? Like who, who I see Kwame Nkrumah's speech. Where is it? It's like, how do I assess it? You know, one, I'll tell you one emotional story. Um, one day I went in my school, I was very down that day and I went to the New York Public Library, I saw a picture of Kwame Nkrumah I've never seen in my life. It pissed me so off, so <laughs> bad. I was so mad. I was so mad that why is it that it's not in the University of Ghana? Mm -hmm. Why is it that it's not in the University of um, 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 Kenya University? Mm -hmm. You know, there might be, but what I'm doing is I'm talking about it now. You know, I'm bringing the conversation up. I'm, I'm talking about taking the lead. You know, so let's make it accessible to everyone. So it's expensive, my brother. This journey is not cheap. Mm -hmm. It's very expensive. I've had conversations with people, um, with archives and other things. It's, it's expensive. Is <laughs> my one what, uh, the one point five what, one point two cannot <laughs> mm. even tip the the toe, but it can start something. Yeah. You know, so I'm I'm happy you brought it up, and I'm happy that. Um, I, I'm sure you're willing to join, roll your sleeves and join me in this journey. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, if you're listening to Geek Squad. We're talking about the photo library. Be kind. That's the name of the project. And if you haven't heard about it, just Google the Be Kind Photo Library project and then you get more information. That, But, I mean, trust me, once you're tuned in, you're probably getting all the information in this show. The Geek Squad is brought to you by MTN. Choose your own bundle, your own way with MTN Flexi Bundle. Just dial star 138 hash and enjoy bundles that don't expire. We're taking a quick breather. When we come back, we will talk some more. Hello class, mental. What is two and three? 23. Two and four. 24, 2, and 5. Sonata! It's been 25 amazing years with you. And to celebrate this huge milestone, we're giving away 25 brand new sleek Hyundai Sonata vehicles and lots of exciting prizes in the MTN at 25 promo. Just keep using your MTN number and talk, text, browse, and Momo more to gain points. And you could win one of 25 brand new sleek Hyundai Sonata vehicles and lots and lots of cash prizes each month in the MTN at 25 promo. Dial star 156 hash today and begin your journey to win big only on MTN everywhere you go. And welcome back. You're tuned in to Geek Squad on Joy 99.7 FM. You can tweet at us at hashtag Joy Geek Squad. Or you can send us a WhatsApp. It's 055 quadruple 1 997. <clears throat> Sorry, 055 11 
055-11-11997. Send us a WhatsApp. Share your sentiments about this project, how you wish you could help, if you want to help. And yeah, just send me a WhatsApp. Now, Paul, you know, um, this is a tech show. So most of the tech community listens. Um, is there any support that you wish the tech community could support with? A lot, a, a mm. lot, a lot, you know. Um, 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 uh, imagine, just imagine mm -hmm. bringing the tech community into the same room with photographers. Just imagine what will happen. <laughs> I'm yeah. just, I'm just thinking out loud. Just imagine what will happen to bring these two people together, filmmakers and, um, and, um, engineers mm -hmm. together, you know, just imagine what will happen in the room. I don't know. I, I don't know. You know, and just, option of just ideas. And a lot of things will happen. I, yeah. And you see the point is that I do not know every single thing. Mm -hmm. I just have some ideas. I just, I'm a curious person because I read a lot. You know, I read currently. It's like, I read too much, you know, sometimes it mess up with me. I'm, I'm on, on, always on the path every year trying to do 50, 50 books a year, mm. you know, and I'm reading, I'm reading about science. I'm reading about, um, um data science. I'm reading about, um, marketing. I'm reading about anything. So as a photographer who's reading and questioning things, you know, how do we do this? How do we bring all these things to mm -hmm. imagine going to, um, Osu and just there's a gallery or whatever and just pressing a button and you could listen to a sound of 1940 or a sound in 1989 how osu looked like with technology yeah. imagine walking through osu with vr and knowing how osu looked like have you ever thought about it you know have you ever considered like how was osu was in the 90s you just you just sparked a nostalgic moment for me. I remember telling someone about uh, a place we used to get ice cream at Osu called Number One, and they they couldn't relate. And I'm like, wow, I wish there was a picture. I, I couldn't even Google Number One to show them what Number One looked like, and that that's the unfortunate thing. So yeah, I get where you're coming from. That that's that's a brilliant idea. So the techies who are listening, these are some of the things we should be doing right now. You have. Yeah, Google Street View. But if we could have our own, I don't think that corner watch it joint that you, you love so much, 20 years from now, when it's not there, you're telling the story about, oh, there used to be a watch it joint here and it's not there. And you don't have pictures or anything to show for it. How would it feel? So let's jump on this project. I think it's it's a noble project and every all hands on deck. So let me quickly take this. We're in the Momo month, and now's the time to activate your MTN Momo account. You have to dial star 170 hash for MTN Momo, select your four-digit PIN number, and follow the prompts. The best part is all new Momo subscribers from now till the end of September stand a chance to win a cool 50 CDs when they make more than three transactions on MTN Momo within the first week of registration. The more you send and receive cash this MTN Momo month, the higher your chances of winning. And another thing, you fir your first transaction of up to 100 CDs every day is also free of charge at no service fee. Activate now and just Momo it everywhere you go. So while you're Momoing it, consider the fact that we are raising, yes, I'm supporting Paul's cause. We're raising money to set up Decan. So Paul, it, for us in Ghana who want to support this project, how do we get about it? Sorry. Yeah. So, um, again, um, I've started from us, mm. um, I'm coming to Ghana, you know, and, um, right now the only means available is like, we, we just like everything exploded in just in a week, you know, and we are trying to figure things out from places to places. And, mm -hmm. but right now as it stands now, uh, I'm very easily accessible. I have my, um, email address so ready available on my Instagram, my Facebook, um, my, uh, the organization is also available. Um, it's called, um, Deccan center dot org. Mm -hmm. If you check that out, you, you have every information. I'm very transparent in some of the things I do because, um, 
ideas are not proprietary, you know. Right. Um, and my goal is not to hoard information and knowledge I have. My idea is to spark information, uh, spark conversation. My idea is to inspire somebody else to do something I cannot. Maybe the person has more resources than me. Maybe the person has more skill. I cannot code. You know, my brain does not work that way. The only thing in my brain's work is more visual. Mm. You know, I, uh, chemistry, I failed in chemistry. <laughs> you know, so some of these things I do not know. So everybody out there who um, want to help, honestly, you can check me out on webs on Facebook, Instagram, on Twitter. Mm. You can also um, reach out to us. You know, my personal email is photo at com. If you search Paul Ninsen, you will see my website. You can reach out to me. My team has been helping me effectively for me to reply all messages and yeah. Great, 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 great. That's wonderful. So you heard it. If you want to support, just go to um, Paul Ninsen, photo at com. send an email and he'll reply. Now, another thing I want to ask is, have you thought of seeking for the gov- support from the government of Ghana? Yes, I cannot do anything without the, um, I ca- sorry, I take it back. Um, I cannot, with my vision, I think it's true, with my vision and the um, environmental situation of Ghana and Africa, and even every situation, I cannot work without, I cannot be effective. It's like, if you're going from Kumasi to Accra, and you want to pass from Vota region to Kumasi, mm-hmm. it's not effective. Yeah. The road to Kumase is um, through in Sawam, straight to Kumase, and you can do three hours. Mm-hmm. But if you pass through Vota region, you do maybe 15 <laughs> to uh, seven hours. So I think that I need the government. I cannot um, be effective without the government. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, yes, of course, I'm seeking the government help in any way I can. I'm willing to um, talk. You know, um, they, they know more than maybe probably I do. Yeah. you know the, the, so i'm open i'm open to work with institution even churches <laughs> who um think that what i'm doing is um, help or help their community you know the chiefs you know um, um land is expensive in Accra, in kumasi in every part of the country so if i want to situate it in kumasi i want to situate it in ghana in Accra. Uh, i need a land so mm. um, i'm willing to partner with and also my vision is I cannot live in isolation. If I put the the place at Osu, I want to work with the community in Osu. Right. You know, to do some innovative things, to help the community be an assistant. So again, I'm saying this like, this is an institution filling a void. Right. It's not an institution replacing anybody. <laughs> it's an institution willing to collaborate with people, schools, you know, Osu Presby, Osu, right. um, Kumase, uh, Bomso uh, uh, Presby, right. um, Bomso uh, Catholic school, a, 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 B, whatever it is, I'm willing to partner with it. So whoever it is, and wherever it is, I am um, willing to help and work with the people to make this a dream. Interesting. So once again, I just want you for the last time, because we've run out of time, to just tell people how they can reach you for those who missed it, and then we'll wrap up. Thank you so much. Um, uh, again, I would say it's, um, info at decancenter.org. Right. Info at decancenter.org. If you think, um, if you, is, um, if you don't remember, it is easy to type decancenter.org. Um, for me, my name is easy. Um, Paul Ninsen. Ninsen is N I N S O N. Yeah, my dad is a fancy. Um, mm-hmm. So I think there's a lot of Ninsens around. So it's easy to type my name reach out to me. I know people gracefully have sent me emails and people have sent me um, um, WhatsApp messages and DM on Instagram. And I've had an interesting conversation with people and I'm so happy. You know, this is very humbling. It's not a mm-hmm. time to switch on to um, celebrity status or something. It's not me. I'm right. not that type of person. So I'm very open and friendly uh, and open to sit down with people and talk to anybody who's willing to come on board and help. My team is available in Ghana, and um, I've committed myself to do uh, 50-50. My, I have a policy, 50 female, 50 men in the same room. I'm, that is my policy in hiring. Right. And we, we're working so hard to fill spot, and um, we're hiring. Actually, we will be publishing it that very soon. And whoever is out there who thinks that his skill should will be needed, Liberian, 
um, marketing, PR, all that. If you still you think that your skill is needed, you know, you can just reach out and we can have a conversation. Right, great. Now, quickly, um, a lot of the youth in Ghana are looking to take online certificate courses. Do you think that that's a good advice and would it help them in securing a job? I, I believe in skill. Right. Skill is the future. I don't remember where my certificates are. <laughs> and now I'm not making money out of my certificate. So skill It's not the certification. It is the skill. So whether you take the courses online or you take the courses in person, remember, it's a skill. So don't just go and write will, the course and pass. Just grab yes, the skill no, from it. No, the future is skill. Right. I do, we, who out there want to dispute that is, is fine. This is my opinion. The future is skill. You know, I have seen how much my skill has helped me get to places. I never imagined that um, uh, um, um, uh, a son of um, a second-hand clothes seller and accountant can, can get to places where, um, like this, you know, skill has made, made um, life easy, maybe probably in some ways I never thought. I'll be honest with you, I've never had an office job mm. in my life. You know, this, these skills that has helped me, the tools, uh, has helped me to get to where I am today. So I believe in skill. Again, Decan has um, a program we're trying to um, design. I have team, my team is so wonderful. I'm, I'm grateful to them that, and even more people are uh, we're trying to recruit more people in. And we considering that online education system, but it's not the online, it's the skill you are acquiring. Thank you very much, Mr. Paul Ninsen, for your time. Thank you for all that you shared with us. And thank you for listening. My name is Kobe Spike Nkrumah. Once again, the show has been Geek Squad. We'll catch you next week with another entertaining, educating, informative episode. Next thank you week. so much for having me. I'm so grateful, Nkrumah. We, I look welcome. forward to having uh, Definitely, lunch Definitely, we you. will get in touch. <laughs> all right, cheers.